Hey everybody, welcome to Meet Firebase, where you get to meet the Googlers that make Firebase happen. On the show with me today is Pedro Nunez. Pedro? Hi everyone. Good to have you on the show. Nice to be here. What do you do with the Firebase team? I'm the tech lead for the front end for crash reporting. And I also help out around the console, around the whole other products as well. And I've been focusing most, more recently on the mobile responsiveness of the console. If anyone at home has used Firebase Crash Reporting, they've probably seen your work already. Hopefully, hopefully they liked it too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like it. I've gotten a lot of use out of it. Um, but about you, uh, where are you from? Originally, I'm from Portugal. I was born in a tiny island uh, between Lisbon and New York called Terceira. It means third in Portuguese, and it's part of the archipelago of the Azores. Ah, the Azores. Okay. Yeah, Anthony Bourdain likes it. Yeah, yeah, well that's how I found out about it too, watching his show. So, uh, what are some interesting things about the Azores? It's extremely green, it's extremely beautiful and untouched. The nature is just overwhelmingly beautiful. It also has very interesting and unique traditions. Uh, namely around bullfighting, but in non, not in that traditional way that we know. It has a different philosophy behind it. We also have very interesting culinary dishes, especially being a, a, a volcano oh, zone. Volcano. There's a very well-known stew, at least in Portugal, that uh, it's cooked underground. So you go to near a geyser zone and you dig a hole and you wrap food around the blanket, bury it, and back four hours later, it's great. Oh, and, and the volcano cooks the stew? Yeah, the soil is that hot. Wow. It's amazing. I'd have to try that sometime. You should. So you were born in the Azores, and then you moved to Portugal. What did you do there? I moved to the mainland together with my family when I was about six, and grew up part of my life there as well. And then eventually I joined college uh, in Coimbra, which is a very old college. Very interesting experience as well. Yeah, and you studied computer science there. I did. And then at the beginning of your career, you became a software engineer. But you didn't stick with that. So what happened? I did, and I worked there for two years in Portugal. And eventually, I wanted to try something else. I wanted to see what it was like to live abroad, to work abroad, to do other types of work. And, and I did. There was an opportunity to join Google in Ireland doing customer support, and that's what I started doing. So you transferred essentially into a customer support role. Right. But you still found ways to make your engineering background work, right? That's correct. I was doing customer support, and after a while of doing support, you end up realizing, at least in our case, that there's a lot of processes that look repetitive. And if something's repetitive enough, then you can automate it. So I started automating some of those processes and doing internal tooling and dashboards for that department. And eventually I moved back into engineering again. Yeah. Mm. And so you became a, a software engineer at Google right. and then you joined the Firebase team, which is kind of where we are now. True. You mentioned you grew up in the uh, Portugal area, then you moved to Ireland and you didn't stay there. You actually like traveled all over the world, right? Yeah, I've been traveling a lot. Traveling is something that I love. It just provides me with unique experiences and knowledge of people and the world. It's just like building software, right? You cannot build one experience. It needs to be dynamic enough. And if you don't understand really the people and how different places or markets or whatever, it's never going to be great. And so how, how widely have you traveled throughout the world? I've been to about 50 countries, a little bit more. Wow, 50 countries. But what is one place in particular that really stood out to you, where you really had a great experience? Every place is very unique and very different and special in many ways. Most recently I was in Vietnam and that was a very unique experience. You travel through this isolated region, this, you see these small communities that live and work in the rice fields every day. You understand that the same constructs that we have in our society, us being rich or us being poor, or it's really different. They don't care about your color, about your height, about your anything. It's just, they just give you everything. People are just genuinely good. It was an amazing, warming experience. So you've probably, I imagine, taken all these experiences and brought them into the Firebase experience to some degree. So I know on the Firebase team you've tried to make the uh, Firebase console very easy to use on mobile devices. Yes, yes, that is something that is very important. Not only about mobile responsiveness so that you can, you know, it's important to see 
crash details or whatever it is that you are looking for at that particular moment without having to wait to get home or to get to a desktop. But also because throughout the world there's different infrastructure. So it's important to make the console, the console very responsive and very fast on you know, slow connections, on all these different types of environments so that it becomes accessible for everyone. Mm. For crash reporting in particular, I imagine there's a, a particular need to be able to triage and respond to crashes. There is. Right? We actually made that and it became very evident and it's actually highly used now with uh, the new release of the alerts, which gives an entry point to the console. And I mean, when was the last time you opened a, an alert on your desktop? Yeah. Usually do that on as you go. The button says view details, doesn't say uh, open later. Right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly the point. Yeah, well, so I hope uh, a lot of people find that very helpful, being able to view the console more easily on a mobile device. So something in the news recently, Google announced that they are acquiring Fabric, which includes Crashlytics, which is another crash reporting tool. And so I think a lot of developers are probably wondering, which one do I choose? Do I choose Crashlytics or do I choose Firebase Crash Reporting? What kind of advice do you have for them about that? Well, developers should evaluate both options and go with the one that serves their immediate need. Crashlytics joining Google should not affect anybody's life today or tomorrow. Google should provide a smooth transition throughout the process as, we, as time evolves. All right, great. So it sounds like no matter what developers choose, uh, Google's got their back so that they won't have to have some sort of rocky transition That's in right, the future. That's right. Yeah, they should not. Okay, so uh, I have a game to play with you now about Crash Reporting. All right. So uh, I have a tablet here, and what I've got is a series of code chunks that oh, either boy. definitely will crash or may crash, depending on some circumstances. So I'd like you to uh, take a look at these and see what you think, and we'll, uh, we'll score them at the end. So the first one is Java. Right, I can see that much. Okay. <laughs> these will essentially uh, raise a out of bounds exception. And out of bounds. Yeah, when the eye reaches the length. All right, so how would you fix this one? Remove the equal. Remove the equal, so it's just i less than right. args.length, okay. Yeah, so yeah, we're definitely crawling off the end of the array. All right, next question. This one is C. Ooh, it has been a while. <laughs> this is a little tricky one. This is a little tricky one. So there's a, a pointer, a char pointer. There's two actuals. Oh, then it's been removed. I actually don't know how this is going to go. <laughs> it's a trick because the code looks like it's trying to replace the first character of the string from R to T right. and then printing it out. But that second line where the string pointer equals T, that's actually going to crash because it's not indexing into the string. It's actually messing with the, the string pointer itself. So it's a, it looks like it'll work, but it actually doesn't work. All right, All right. let's move on to the next one. This one is back to oh, Java. So you have a function f, s is null, you switch on arg, if arg equals key, and you want to know the length of s. Yeah. This might crash if there's no default on the switch. This will crash if arg does not eventually match key one or key two. Yeah, so what's the exception? The error, the exception. Yeah. This is null pointer exception. Null pointer exception, that's yeah. right. All right, that's cool. Right. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. So you have an object, routes, that has a bunch of entries that are functions. Then you have this dispatch function, which is going to call on this. The parameter route will potentially have the value of route one or route two, right? So yeah, and so this will, re will fetch one of those functions and it will call that function. So what about with... the value of route? Yeah, the value of route would, will be like route one, for example, correct? Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna call that function again and again and again. I don't understand. Well, let's take a look. Uh, consider if route doesn't match one of the entries in the routes object. If route has the value of Doug, sure. for example. Why would right? it have the value of me? <laughs> right, that'll be undefined. Undefined is not a function, is that that classic? Then you're gonna call function with undefined and with args. You're gonna call route with undefined. Yeah, you're gonna end up args. with an undefined function yeah, exactly. coming out of that. Yeah. 
And then what happens if you try to call a function on Undefined is not a function, yeah. which is that classic JavaScript error. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a JavaScript version of no pointer. <laughs> yeah, it's, like... it's terrible. It's been tormenting me for years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you and me both. All right, we have one more. All right. What do you think of this one? While the monkey is hungry, you want Firebase to send the monkey bananas? Yeah, I don't know about that one. That seems like something that, uh, that Nate maybe uh, added into our game. I'm gonna have to talk to Nate about tampering with our games again. You don't touch my bananas. It's an interesting, I'm kind of hungry myself. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, if you know if you know Nate, this could be an infinite loop because he seems to be hungry all the time. Oh, so, yeah, is that yeah <laughs> we'll have to, uh, we'll, we'll have to see how this algorithm actually works for him. All right, Pedro, thanks for playing the game. And thanks for having show. me. And uh, I'll talk to Nate later about tampering with the game. It seems to uh, cause some difficulty. Uh, for everyone watching at home, you can subscribe to the Firebase channel on YouTube to get updates on all our video content. Uh, my name is Doug Stevenson. This is Pedro Nunes. And I'll see you next time.